Welcome to my 2017 class for the Virtual Sewing Expo. I'd like to thank Margaret Moorhead and her staff at the Virtual Sewing Guild for organizing this event and you for attending. Margaret has asked us the, to shorten our classes this year so that you have time to watch them all. So rather than to do two separate classes, what I'd like to do is really delve into one thing that plagues a lot of us embroiders and that's puckering. So if you look at this shirt, I don't know how well you can see it, but it's really puckered and it's really ripply. It didn't come that way when I bought it, but after washing, it did. So we'll discuss it, why it got this way. And in this session, I'm going to talk about hooping. In the next session, we'll talk about other factors that contribute to uh, puckering. So as they say in sports, the best defense is a good offense. And I'm going to be sharing with you embroidery best practices that will hopefully help you get better embroidery and hopefully I won't offend too many people along the way. Puckering cannot be cor corrected after the fact. Once it's puckered, it's puckered. And fortunately there are ways to prevent it and that's what we have to focus on here. So let's get started. So I mentioned that we're going to focus on hooping. This item is hooped. It's just a little piece of fabric and I've hooped it with stabilizer and you notice that it's hooped between the rings of the hoop. The hoop is part of the stabilizing process and we need to have stabilizer in there, we need to have our project in there. Everything that we want to have stable should go between the rings of the hoop whenever possible. Now commercial embroiders know this and they just treat it as a given. However, what I found is a lot of home embroiders prefer to float. And what do we mean by that? Well in that case, only the stabilizer is hooped. And instead of hooping the, the item in, the item just gets floated on top of the hoop and somehow attached in some other way. Now there's no reason to float this little apron because it's a flat item, it's easily hooped, and unless there's some place that you're going to put it where you can't get it in the hoop, this should be hooped. The little cap that goes with it, little chef's cap, it does need to be floated because there's no way that you can hoop this and get it between the rings of the hoop. So you're going to have to float this. Now why is floating bad? Well what happens is you're only hooping this stabilizer and we have long straight edges on our hoops and when this gets in the machine and it starts stitching it's going to start pounding stitches in there. And what happens is things can slip in these long straight sides. And if it slips and starts getting soggy, which this one already is, you're going to lose stability. And if it happens on a little hoop like this, imagine what happens when we start using our really ginormous hoops on our bigger machines. Things can happen. So let's talk about a good hooping. I already mentioned this one. This one is just woven fabric. The fabric is neutral. It's not stretched. It's not distorted in any way. My stabilizer is hooped all the way around. This is a tearaway, and it's quite secure. Now, am I going to get puckers? I don't know. I could. But there are tips in the second class where I discuss what other things we have to know about other than just hooping. This is a knit shirt, and it too is hooped properly. If I slide my fingers across it, I don't get any rippling. I don't get any snow plowing. I won't get a big wave of fabric in front of my fingers. I also cannot pinch up any fabric. This is a good hooping. Now, I would hoop a piece of water-soluble topping with that, and I would actually put that in the hoop with it. I've used cutaway because it is a knit. It's not stretched. It's not distorted. It's ready to embroider. Will it pucker? Depends. I don't know. Now, let me show you a bad hooping. This is guaranteed to pucker. You can see all these stripes. See how they're uneven? They're not like that on the fabric. They're straight. This is a really, really stretchy knit. And I've done what most of us were told to do. I've put it in my hoop. I've stretched my fabric because it's got to be drum tight. You will never make a knit drum tight without stretching it all to heck. So you can see how uneven this is. If I embroider on this, it doesn't matter how well I stabilize it, once I take it out and the fabric relaxes back to its normal state, I'm going to have puckers. It's just what we call an embroidery fact of life. 
So how do we hoop correctly? Well, first of all, let me tell you a bit about these guys. Professional embroiderers use hooping aids. And there's no reason why we as home embroiderers can't use hooping aids too. I particularly like these because they use magnets and they're very easy to use. They're also dual sided, so this is the wider side, this is the narrow side, this is the adult size shirt, and then we have a youth size shirt if I flip it over. This is great for working on larger hoops too. Now, this, I had a prototype of this about six years ago, and they had a hard time finding just the right materials and the right factory to produce it at an economical point, and it just now has come in, and I love it. I am so glad that they took the time and went forth and just didn't abandon the project. So I'm going to set up again, and we'll hoop our little piece of knit properly. So I have my outer hoop attached to the hooping station, and it's just held in place with three magnets. This one has some grooves so I can line it up in the center. I can place it anywhere for this particular item. You can hoop shirts on this one, but it's just much easier on the large one. So especially if you have a small studio, this one might be ideal for you. I'm going to take my stabilizer, which is a cutaway. I'm going to hold it in place with a couple of magnets and then I'm going to smooth my fabric on top. Now I could do some things to see if my stripes are straight. I'm not going to worry about that here. Um, that's a whole separate issue. I have already pre-tensioned this hoop. And what I mean by pre-tensioning is that I've loosened my screw, because remember I had it really tight before, and I have tested it with this fabric and stabilizer combination. So now all I should have to do is just insert my inner hoop and it should go in with that Goldilocks zone. Not too tight, not too loose, just right. And once I've gotten it pre-tensioned, all I need to do then is put my hoop in, take it to the machine, do my embroidery, pop out that inner hoop when I'm done, and I, then I can go and hoop my next one. I don't need to touch the screw until I change either my stabilizer or my fabric. So let's do this. I want to make sure that my hoop is going in in the right direction. It's going to press it in towards the top and then I'm going to gently pull my fabric down a little bit and then I'm going to just press it in place. I, I did get a little curvature here so I might want to pop that out and do it again. But You want a little bit of tension coming down and I'll explain why on this particular fabric. Did I get it straight? Well, not quite. It's almost in the middle of the stripe over here and maybe down a little bit over here. But that's the subject of another video, getting things in the hoop straight. What I want you to focus on is the tension. How to get things hooped in the hoop smoothly and tensioned properly. So let's take it off. And if I look at the back, I can see that I've got it hooped all the way around my stabilizer. It's smooth, it's taut, it's wrinkle free. My top looks pretty good, but there are a couple other tests we need to do. So let's look at those. Okay, we've got it hooped, but remember when I did that little snow plow test over here? Let's try it on this one. So if I run my fingers down this one, I don't know if you can see, but I have a big wave of fabric. I can also pinch up fabric. This is not good. When we hoop, we want our fabric to be at one with our stabilizer, sort of a zen thing for embroidery. The fabric and the stabilizer need to be connected and one. And this fabric is just really, really stretchy. So if I had this taut enough that it didn't snow plow, it would be stretched. But at neutral tension, it's too floppy. So what do I do? Well, I can use a stabilizer, a fusible stabilizer, make sure it's a cutaway, not a um, like a sticky tearaway, because that's going to break down, it won't give you a good result. Or I could use a spray. And my preference generally is to use a spray. And I'm going to spray just the stabilizer. I'm going to do it in a safe spot, like in a box. I'm just going to mist the stabilizer. Then I'm going to apply the stabilizer to the back of the fabric. 
So I don't want to spray on my fabric, just the stabilizer. And that usually does the trick. Now here's some other things to know. You want to hoop right before your embroider, especially if you're using a spray, because these can dissipate, and you don't want it to be gone by the time you start embroidering. But you don't want to leave a mark on your fabric. So you want to hoop, embroider, and then unhoop. Now if you've got everything right, your embroidery will last the lifetime of the garment. You want to take extra care on this part. It sometimes takes me longer to hoop than it does to do the embroidery. I might have to hoop multiple times to get it exactly right. But I know that if I do that, I'm going to have a good result, generally. There are the things that can go wrong. But most likely, I'm going to have a good result, and my embroidery will last a long, long time. If I don't pay proper attention to this point, I'm, chin I'm you know, skimping on the stabilizer, I'm just putting it in there willy-nilly, I'm just not paying attention. I may have shortened the life of that embroidery to about two seconds after I unhoop it. And why spend the time doing that? It's just not worth it. So this is part of how to reduce the chances of puckers. There are other things that cause puckers, and we're going to take a look at those in the other video. Now, I do have other videos on my YouTube channel. There are a lot of videos that show how to hoop different things on the hooping station and a little bit more about the hooping station. I also have lots of blog posts on my website that go into other products and other techniques and different things. So be sure to check that out. And while you're there, sign up for the newsletter. You'll get a free design collection. If you go to the resources page, which should be linked somewhere around here for the Virtual Sewing Expo, you'll find a list of specials for you guys during the expo time. And you'll also find a list of the products that I talked about and links to other related articles that you might find helpful. So I hope you'll join me for the next video, the next class, and thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.